Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out at the range to talk about a classic American rifle, the BAR. Well, a relative of it anyway. This is the original. This is a semi-automatic version of the Browning automatic rifle. It would have been the mainstay squad support weapon back in World War II. Would it even be used in Korea and maybe even a little bit in Vietnam? But it's just really basically a semi-automatic rifle that's also capable of full auto fire in its military configuration. The gun chamber is 30 6 fires from a 20-round box magazine, doesn't have a quick change barrel or anything like that, and it's a hoss. This thing is super heavy, but it was known for its reliability, and apparently American troops loved it. So after the war, Browning never really offered this as a sporting rifle, but FN would redesign it, make some significant changes to it, maintain the name BAR, and continue to sell that gun up until this day as a very popular sporting rifle, hunting rifle. But they would modify that gun and call it the FNAR, and they would bring that to market around 2008, and that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. But first, we're going to do a little bit of shooting with the classic. I love this thing. It's entirely too much fun. We have some Federal 30 6 and we're going to do a little shooting with this. Only going to put about five rounds through it really quick just to blow the cobwebs out of it. I want to thank our friends over at Federal for supplying the ammunition free of charge to the channel. Been shooting this stuff since I was a kid. Absolutely love it. All right, where'd my magazine go? So we have a few rounds loaded into the mag. You just lift the big girl up, insert the magazine, and then charging handles over here on the left-hand side. Pull the bolt to the rear, and she's ready to go. All right, flip it to fire. And uh, let's put up the aperture sight. All right. <laughs> Given the weight of this beast, it uh, really tames that 30 out 6. But let's take a look at a relative. The FNAR, which is based on the redesigned BAR, and again, marketed as a BAR rifle. And uh, yeah, they don't make this thing anymore, but it's a cool piece of history that at one time seemed to be fairly popular with the people that owned it. A lot of folks ask me, how can I get involved in the firearms business in that particular community? And one of the best ways to do that is to become a gunsmith. Every gunsmith I know is just overbooked with work. It's a very good living. And so if you would like to become a gunsmith, you need to go to a gunsmithing school or become an apprentice for an existing gunsmith. But Modern Gun School is an accredited college that also works with veterans in the GI Bill, where you can go and get a degree from accredited college in gunsmithing and then go out and start your own gunsmithing business which I think is a really great option. Again, throughout my entire life, gunsmiths have always been able to earn a really good living, assuming they have a really strong work ethic. So please check out Modern Gun School. I do have a link in the video description below. This is my old FNAR. As I already mentioned, this is based on the hunting rifle that Browning still sells or FN still manufactures as the BAR rifle. Now, again, even though outwardly it looks quite similar in terms of the receiver to the original design, the basic operating me mechanism has been completely changed. So really there's no parts com commonality between it and the original military version. It's just maintained its name and somewhat maintained its outward appearance, making it look like a BAR. But typically you're gonna find these things which is standard wooden stocks on them, a wrist stock, no pistol grip, wooden furniture out front, and a lightweight profile barrel for hunting. So you're trying to make the rifle as light as possible. This thing is a lot lighter than the military version. So. The FNAR came around about 2008, and it was a modified version, again, of the redesigned BAR rifle, but they were trying to cater to the black rifle community. They made a version of it with a heavy barrel, which you see here. It has a heavy profile fluted barrel on it. They had another one with a lightweight profile barrel, and then they had a competition model as well. I think there were different barrel lengths you could order. The guns had pick rails out here, Polymer stocks, pistol grip, you have a cheek riser, and a butt plate. So you had stock shims, I think five of those, three different cheek plates, and I think three different butt plates. I don't have any of that stuff anymore, long since gone, but uh, you could replace the various parts of the stock to kind of get the length of pull and the riser height on the cheek uh, for whatever optic you were using to kind of tailor the gun to yourself. So if you take a look at it, it has a big old mag well down here with a magazine release button there. 
they'll have 10 or 20 round magazines. This is the 10 round magazine. And it will lock open on the last shot fired. This is your bolt release right here. Push down on that when you don't have an empty magazine in it. Push up on it, lock it to the rear, or push down on it to release it on a fresh magazine. Over on the other side, you have an ambi mag release right there. And 20 round magazines were also available for it. Now the magazines are proprietary. They're wildly expensive if you can find them because the gun's no longer in production. And if you take a look at them, they have an interesting design. They look kind of hobbled together. It has a screw right there on the follower. Doesn't look like the highest quality sheet metal, but it works. I mean, it's typical FN. It, it's of good quality. It may not look like it, but it is. So this little gun, again, had kind of a following to it, but it didn't gain mar market acceptance, I don't think, primarily because of the cost. The things were really, really expensive when they came out in the early 2000s. And so I think that drove a lot of people away from it, trying to experiment with it. Now, the folks that I've read about online that post about their guns, the, po the people that own them, seem to really like them. Now, FN made a very bold claim back in the day. I think they wanted to say that these things were guaranteed MOA accurate with match ammunition. I've never really seen that. Occasionally, you'll get an MOA group out of it, but it's a one and a half inch-ish gun uh, with match ammunition, typically. Now, there were some problems with the gun that I've read about, and mine seems to have it to a certain degree, although it, I, I can't quite tell, but the rails on these might be a little bit canted. And you'll see people talking about that on the internet. So when I put the scope on it, it had been leveled on another gun, I put it on here, and it seemed like it was a little bit off, so I had to straighten the scope out. But looking down it, I can't really see an angle to it, but it's hard to tell. I just know that that was a problem with them, and so I'm kind of looking for that with this particular rifle, but I gave up on that a while ago trying to figure that out. It's, it's zeroed, shoots just fine with this primary arms optic that's on top of it. So again, very lightweight, not threaded on the end, has a nice heavy profile barrel. This one has a chrome line barrel in it as well. And what's interesting about it is it has a nice long length of pull on it, has an A2 style grip. You'll notice it's massive. I mean, it's bigger, way bigger than it needs to be. I think it looks a little bit awkward, but it gives you a very similar feel to an AR-15. Maybe that's where the AR comes from, but uh, yeah has a very light, crisp trigger in it. The trigger, I would say, is almost too light. So for hunting, yeah. For uh, personal defense, law enforcement use, things like that, that trigger's way too light, at least on this example. And shooting it is quite pleasurable. It's, uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of recoil, but it is a lightweight 308. And it does, um, whew, it does have a little bit of push to it, but you can shoot the thing all day long. It's not going to hurt. Let's see if I have some 308 <clears throat> ammo around here really quick. What is this? Ah, it's match ammo. We'll just go ahead and shoot it. This is some Norma 175 grain match ammo. And let me rip this box open here because they seal them. We'll put a few rounds in it. I'll show you how to load her up and all that good stuff. All right, we'll just take the five round magazine. I'm sorry, 10 round magazine, put five rounds in it. I believe I have this thing zeroed still, so you can see how the magazine is loaded. All right, I'm gonna drop this 20 rounder out of here. All right. Now to charge it, has a charging handle on the side like an AK, pull to the rear, let her go, she's ready to fire. Safety is a shotgun style safety, it's right here behind the trigger, it's a cross block, so push it to the left and that's ready for to fire, push it to the right, it's on safe. All right, you know what, let's go ahead and shoot a group. I Hopefully this thing's zeroed, I'm going to shoot this target right here.
I'm going to go ahead and say it does not like that ammunition. Holy cow, that's awful. I think that's the worst group it's ever fired. All right, let's try something a little different here. Uh, that's hot six. We'll try some 175 grain Federal. That was 175 grain Norma. The gun can shoot better than that. All right, let's, uh, let's see if she can redeem herself here. All right, bolts locked to the rear, last shot fired. Go ahead and release it. Couldn't use the bolt release, but she used the charging handle. We'll go for the target right there. Scope's still zeroed out. It's just way high. Hmm, looks like this is hitting the same spot. See if it groups. Two. Yeah, much better. Good old Federal. Yeah, now that's a proper group. It just needs to come down. When I put this away last, I know it was zeroed, but the weather's changed considerably. Let's come right a couple clicks. All right. If I have to come down anymore, I'm going to have to take the turret cap off because I'm hitting the zero stop. So, again, recoil is pronounced. You're going to know it's kicking. Uh, it's, it kicks more than a bolt gun of about the same weight for whatever reason. But uh, again, it's not uncomfortable. You just want to make sure you got it in the meaty portion of your, your shoulder pocket there so it doesn't get onto a collarbone or something like that if you shoot it prone or off a bench because it'll, it'll definitely leave a mark. But uh, other than that, it's a really, really cool gun. I just wish I could suppress it, but um, I get it from that era. Suppressors just weren't all that common. Even today, they're becoming more common, but they're not wildly popular, but they should be. So in that previous group, the last group they fired with the Federal, we got pretty close to one MOA. So that's about all the gun's capable of. Now I got some 168 grain Federal Gold Metal Match here. We'll take five shots at that far right target up on the top. This gun, here I'll go ahead and show you how the bolt release works. Just like that, just push down that lever. The gun kind of hit it, it's going for a niche market. I'm not really sure I understand it. Now I was interested in it just because I saw everybody ranting and raving about them back in the day, but um, I just don't I just don't think that they really filled a niche that people were all that interested in. If you ask me, a good AR-10 like the new Ruger SFAR, a Daniel Defense, something like that is going to be a better rifle, still going to be lightweight, going to have familiar controls, and use a standard SR-25 magazine, not the wildly expensive and hard-to-find magazines that these old girls use. Yeah, that's about right. So the 160s, 168s opened up just a little bit, 175s there. That's about normal for this gun. I got some ball here. Oh yeah. Let's see how she shoots with this Norma ball. Generally speaking, it's a long reach that mag release. You're gonna have to break your grip and get up there or use your offhand. Normally this ammo will shoot really good out of stuff like the Scar and AR-10s. We'll see how it shoots out of the FNAR. It's just a 147 grain ball Norma. I haven't been able to find that stuff. They used to send it to me, but Norma doesn't talk to me anymore. And I saw some online, but it's 150 grain. I know they had a recall on it. I never had any problems with it. In fact, this stuff was super accurate. So we're going to take a shot at this group here. Now, a lighter bullet going faster might have significant point of impact shift. We'll see. No. Look at that. Let's see if I can keep that up. <laughs> I 
that ain't bad for ball, guys. I mean, that's just generic old range ammunition. So that's kind of the accuracy that people were getting out of these. Not super great, but more than enough for hunting, for self-defense, things like that. Now, again, I wouldn't choose this particular weapon for self-defense unless I absolutely had no other choice, mostly because of that trigger, just really, really light trigger, more of a match trigger. I like a heavier trigger on a defensive gun. But in terms of reliability, the thing's never given me any problems. It seems like a diverse diet of uh, ammunition, 147 grain ball, 168 grain, 175 grain match. I don't think you're gonna cause it any functional issues. So yeah, it was really, really an interesting gun. I'd say I, I hate seeing guns discontinued, but I can understand why this thing really never met with much market acceptance given the price of it and it's kind of semi-odd nature. So you're probably asking yourself, how does this thing work? Well, it's like a big gas operated shotgun in essence. And to take it apart, I'm not gonna fully disassemble it because it's something of a nightmare. It's just time consuming. But I'm gonna make sure the weapon's empty. To disassemble it, you start off by removing the handguard. There's this big coarse threaded screw up here on the end. I'm gonna loosen that. This is nothing like an AR-15 in terms of being a military design, which is easy to take apart without tools. This will definitely require the use of screwdrivers, punches, and things like that to get it apart. Once you loosen that, the handguard will just slip right off. I'm gonna hold on to the action bars here. And now we can get a good look at the gas system because this is what I wanted to show you guys. I don't know if Jason can get a shot up inside the mag well, if we got enough light. But when I pull the bolt to the rear, you'll see the bolt, it has locking lugs that are almost like a screw pattern. They're at an angle. Looks very much like an old Ross bolt action rifle or something like that. And then up here, these are the, this is your gas block, tapping gas off out of the barrel. It's gonna come down here. This is your gas piston right there. That's the full travel of the piston. So the gas will go in here, expand, push this piston down. Piston's gonna work against this block here. And the arms are gonna, when it comes back, these arms are gonna push the bolt rearward and then the spring, recoil spring, and this is the guide rod, will push it back into battery. Very simple mechanism. Again, that's your gas puck right there, or piston. This is the screw on the end that the handguard attaches to. To take it apart further, it's like a shotgun, pop these three pins out, take the trigger off, then you can pull the pin out, take your, this, is, this uh, bolt stop out, take your action arms off, they just kind of lift off like a shotgun, the handguard holds them in place, slide those out and then you can slide the bolt back and take it out again it's just time consuming and not all that fun so i just wanted to show you how the basic gas system and operation of the gun worked by taking the handguard off which kind of exposes all of that so back in the day these things were retailing for right around 1800 dollars back in 2008 that was a lot of money it's a lot of money today now today we're used to fn sticking you for three thousand plus dollars for a scar so somewhat more acclimated those high prices these days, but in 2008, $1,800, jeez, you, know, you could buy a car for that. But anyway, <laughs> it was a lot of money. So I think they priced themselves out of the market. Neat guns, you can still find them out there on the used market. They're not making them anymore. FN still lists them on their website, but they've been discontinued everywhere. I've never seen one in distribution since we've owned copper. So they've been out of production for a while. So anyway, fun gun, interesting to shoot. If you have one, comment down below. I want to hear what your thoughts are on the FNAR. Is it one of your favorite rifles? Do you like to use it for hunting? Have you had good luck with it? What type of accuracy are you getting, uh, getting with it? I'd love to hear from you guys. All right. Hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is become part of our Patreon family. There is a link in the video description below. Also, right here on YouTube, you got the join and thanks buttons right below the video player. You can use those to help support us in the age of demonetization right here on YouTube. And last but not least, please swing by and check out Copper Custom. Thank you for 15 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.